So good morning, welcome to the last day of Site City. Um, my name is Ellis Ellis and I'm the Managing Director of Vision Aid and I'm joined today by my colleague Kate. Cheers, she's waving. She's our Business Development, Development Manager. And today we're going to be showing you the Helix HD, which is our transportable high definition uh, video magnifier system that connects into a screen. And also our Handy Reader HD, which is a three and a half inch handheld portable video magnifier. I've got a couple of videos to show one of each product. They are very detailed and in-depth, so run through everything about the products. I um, hope you find them interesting. So I'm going to start the first one, which will be the Helix. Hello, hello. I'm Ellis Ellis from VisionAid International. Just in case anyone's wondering, my middle name isn't Ellis. And I'm going to be taking you through our transportable video magnifier, the Helix HD. So what is the Helix HD? Well, it's a really lightweight 1.1 kilograms or 2.4 pound transportable magnifier um, that folds up flat, which makes it really nice and easy to transport and it will fit comfortably into a standard rucksack bag or any standard sort of carry bag um, if you need to move it to multiple locations. The magnification range on it varies from 2.9 times up to well over 300 times, depending on the screen size that you connect it into. Um, I'm gonna be showing it on a standard 24 inch monitor today where it goes from 2.9 times up to 135 times though. So now I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to set up. The unit unfolds like this and the camera section unfolds like that. The control pad actually magnetizes for storage inside it and it is magnetized so it won't fall out, which is nice. You just pull it off, pop that down, put the unit down where you want to use it. And the control panel itself has a magnetic simplifier attached. So by default, there are just two controls that are accessible, the zoom dial and the color dial to keep it as simple to use as possible. If you take the simplifier off, you then get some extra controls, which we're gonna run through later on in the video. So I'll just pop it back on for now. Now we're gonna connect it into the screen. So I've got here a standard HDMI cable, which comes with the Helix HD. It's a good length cable as well to be able to connect to a television screen that might be a little away from the Helix itself. And the power cable obviously comes with it too. So what we do is, turn, if I turn the unit around, hopefully you can see on the back here, we've got the monitor connection. As you look at it from the back, it's on the left-hand side. So we'll plug the HDMI connection into there. And then on the far right-hand side, there's a, a round DC jack connector. The power goes in there. Like that and then you're ready to switch it on while i've got the unit up in the air it's easy to show the on off switch is actually under here and it's a rocker switch so you just rock it towards the back and that will then turn the, the unit on so i'll place it down there turn it on like that and then it just takes a few seconds to start up so while it's starting up just wanted to mention about the wireless keypad it comes with two AAA batteries and the batteries will last for about five years of normal use so a really really good amount of time and it's got a power saving feature which turns itself off when it's not in use automatically just put that back down there and now it's telling us to connect uh, press any button on the keypad to connect if i if i push a control on here it will then pair with the unit connecting there we go and now it's ready to use so now we're going to have a look at a standard newspaper page under the helix hd so you just pop it underneath and it will automatically focus uh, on the whatever you put underneath the, the camera as you move the the page around the nice thing about the helix is that it runs at 60 frames per second so you get very little ghosting or blurring at all when you move around it's just a nice smooth clear image um, so that enables people to read more comfortably and for longer periods of time um, so this is just at the default magnification which i think it's at five times at the moment so we can adjust the size just by rotating this dial on here up and down clockwise and anti-clockwise and the helix actually has a unique twin camera system so you may have noticed this where i zoomed out there to get more of an overview on the page it switched cameras um, and then as you zoom in you'll see it again around five times it then switches to the other camera so it enables the, the camera to be a, a neat and small unit 
um, whilst maintaining the best sort of image quality you can get from a device like this. So if I zoom all the way up, it now is telling us that we can lower the camera head because this unit actually has two camera heights. So if we need even more magnification than 17 times, we can lower the camera head down and then we can carry on zooming all the way up to 50 times in colour and then we can switch into two colour which I'll do in a minute. And once it's zoomed all the way in you can then just push and hold the zoom dial and it activates an overview mode which will then zoom all the way out and give you a little indicator box of where when you release it where it'll zoom back into. So if I now release on there it'll zoom all the way back in exactly on the word that we had there. So it's a really nice easy quick way of seeing where you are on the page if you need to jump to a different location. So one of the other major advantages of a video magnifier system is it actually allows you to enhance the colours of the document that you're looking at rather than it just being like with an optical magnifying glass whatever is there perhaps enhanced with, a, with an LED light. So on here we have the top dial which then allows us to change the colour modes. If we click that down it will change to our chosen two colour combination that you, we prefer and it also remembers a separate magnification level for that mode as well. So when you're using the system users will potentially quite often have a low magnification level for looking at photographs and perhaps the overview of the page and then when you want to read you click that and it will automatically zoom to your chosen magnification for two colour mode as well. While we're in two colour mode we can rotate round and it will go through all the standard colour combinations that are available. 99.9% .9 of people tend to prefer white on black, black on white, yellow on black or black on yellow. So I'll set it to a, um, a yellow and black one. Um, and then to get back to full colour from there, we don't have to t rotate the dial at all. We just click and it will take you back. It's remembered the zoom level we were at for full colour before and we can click again. And it takes us straight back to the two colour mode at the zoom level we were at. So this is 10 times magnification, which is a really nice size on this particular screen for fitting the full column of a, of a newspaper page in on there. Not quite actually on that one, so I'll just zoom it out a little bit. There we are, nine times on there will fit it in perfectly. So that's a nice thing for users very often want to do for magazines or newspapers is to read a full width of the column without having to slide the page left and right um, to read across every line. So that's more difficult and you need larger magnifications if you're viewing a full width of, a, of an A4 sheet, but on a, on a newspaper or magazine you can get more magnification on, on that and it's at nine times on a, on a standard newspaper page on a 24 inch screen there, which is a really good level of magnification. So now we're going to have a look at a glossy magazine cover under the Helix HD. So glossy documents can sometimes cause problems with uh, desktop video magnifiers. Hopefully you'll be able to see sort of the light reflecting off the cover there. Um, the Helix has its own integrated LED lighting underneath, which adjusts itself automatically, but it's also what's called polarised. So it allows um, the lighting level and the LED lights effectively not to shine back and cause reflection issues um, when you're looking at glossy surfaces. So we can have a look on here. I'll position the lady in here and just zoom in. A very bright, vibrant hat she's wearing on there. So no reflections and, and no issues on the, on the image on there. We can also use it to have a look at mobile phone screens or a tablet screen as well. So if I just open my phone up, I've got a, um, something that might make us a bit hungry. Screen rotated on there. Um, you'll notice on here you can actually see the LEDs reflecting back uh, because it's completely reflective, the, the surface of the phone screen. But then on the keypad, we can turn the lights off really easily just by pressing the, um, the button on the right-hand side, the right dial on there. Click that and the lights go off. And then we can just scroll the phone, read about some uh, delicious cakes on there and put it into two colour as well if we want to. So again, we can click the dial down on here and it will then convert your phone screen into your chosen colour combination, making it uh, even easier to read for you. Obviously there's built-in accessibility options on phones as well and tablets which work really, really well. But this is just a nice low-tech way of uh, making it easier for them to be read as well. So it's not just printed material, you can read electronic material from, from screens as well. So now we'll have a look at a book underneath, a, a standard paperback book underneath the Helix. Um, and then I'll go through the lines and blind marker modes as well that come with it. So on here you can very easily magnify the full width of a, a standard paperback novel. Um, let's just see what the size on the magnification is here. So it's at 4.6 when it's on there. Move it up a little bit. Um, and then we can turn on the line markers and blinds with the left dial on here. So if you click that down, 
you then get nice uh, line guides that go across and you can customize the size, so the thickness the, and the color and also the, how transparent they are as well to set up exactly how you may want. Um, I'll put it into two color mode on here so it makes it stand out even more on there. So you can get it to exactly match a line and that then helps you track when you read from left to right across the page or right to left if it's Arabic um, and stay track on that line because when you're learning how to read with, with a device like this it can be quite tricky um, to stay on the, the exact line that you're trying to read, especially at high magnification levels. So it's just a nice, nice tool for that. Um, then there are vertical ones. So if you're looking at columns of figures rather than just uh, a page of text. Uh, and then we have blind markers. So this is exactly the same idea as the lines, but it masks off an area of the screen. This can be really useful for people with nystagmus, uh, where their eyes uh, are difficult to stay, keep them tracked on, on a particular area. Uh, and also people are very sensitive to the amount of light that's coming into their eyes um, because you can blank off sections of it and just stay focused on a single line. So it can make it much, much easier, again, and more comfortable to read. You can read for longer periods and, and makes it all altogether more enjoyable. Um, got vertical ones of those as well. And then that leads us into a unique mode for the Helix, which is multi-line mode. That's not really designed for reading on books. So I've got a blank piece of paper here. I'm going to pop that under the Helix HD's camera. Well, I'm still in uh, black on yellow mode here, so I'm going to switch to full colour. Um, and what we can do, if I start writing on here, you may see that it's not behaving as you might expect, so, because what Helix actually has is a handwriting mode. So when you're in handwriting mode like this, you just tap the zoom dial and you get a nice icon in the corner, uh, and then that will make writing much, much easier. Unfortunately, it's not easy back to front and upside down, so you have to excuse me, I'm just going to write what hopefully will appear is hello. Oh, <laughs> excuse my terrible writing on there. Uh, but you can do that in two color mode as well. So, but this multi-line mode, you can then with the dial adjust the thickness of it. So depending on the magnification level you're at, you can try and correct even for terribly upside down writing on there that's not on the line correctly. Um, so for writing birthday cards, Christmas cards, um, anything if you've got something that doesn't have lines across it or if the lines that are there are really faint and don't come across properly um, that you're, you're trying to see then you can just put your artificial lines on there as thick as you as you like and whichever color you prefer and it can make writing much more easy um, so that's the first sort of enhanced mode for, for writing on there then we also have if we click the dial again it goes into a signature box mode so if you have a checkbook or something where you need to write in a particular area, you can then position under here. For the amounts, you could write in on there. I won't write on this because it's somebody's um, actual checkbook. Uh, and then obviously the signature line under here, you can then position and sign on there to make sure you get it in the right area. Uh, so that's a nice feature, completely unique. And you can change the size of this as well by rotating the dial for the signature guide on there, obviously adjust the, the magnification at the same time as well if you need to, depending on the, the level that you need. So we'll have a look at something else for writing underneath, just a crossword uh, on here. So I'll put this, turn the modes off just by clicking again on there, move the checkbook out of the way. And my poorly written <laughs> hello, and we can pop a crossword underneath. So we're in two colour at the moment, but so all the, the numbers and, and grids come out really nice and clearly on, on here. If you prefer full colour, you can click the dial down again, and then we can go back to the same zoom level we were at before. Um, so obviously you, you'd look at the clues on here. I'm not going to be able to do any of the, the crossword puzzles on there, but just to give you an idea, so if I go for 23 on, on here, you can obviously see as you, and again I put it into handwriting mode, you can then follow across in the box, very similarly to how we were before. Um, and then in two color, the same on here. The nice thing with the Helix as well is there's no shadowing across your finger and the pen nib. On some devices, when you're in two color mode, the pen would um, show a big shadow, which then blocks the, the writing as you do it across there. Um, but that doesn't happen at all on this. So it makes writing in two color mode really, really nice on the system. And that's a sort of general crossword or Sudoku you could be doing with that. Then we've got some other items just to sort of show you what it's capable of doing as well. So general photograph, I'll just pop it back into full colour for this and then zoom out a little bit. This is my daughter and, and son a few years ago now. 
uh, much bigger than that. <laughs> so you can get an idea of the detail you can get from the photographs. If you want even more detail, remember we can lower the camera down to get even higher levels of zoom on there. I'll zoom right in on the eyes on there. And then if we push and hold, if we wanted to get the overview, I can move then and out. Let it zoom back in. So it's quite a nice way of then moving from one place to another at high magnification levels on, a, on an object. Um, then what else have we got? So some food packaging. So this is obviously a, a thicker item, so we just lift the camera back up again. I'll just zoom out a little bit on here. There we are, there we are. So, you know, so you can just move it around. So it's not just flat printed sheets that you can read. You can use it to magnify any any object really under under the camera. It's another thing that's useful to be able to look at underneath it is small print on medication packets. So we've just got some standard ibuprofen here. Pop that underneath, and then. As we zoom in on here, if we need a higher zoom level, then we can go up to 50 times, as we said on here, on this mode, but then we can put it into two color. I'll zoom back out again for a minute so you can see. And then we can go all the way up to the maximum level, which I think is 136 on here, 135 nearly. Um, so a huge level on there, but the image is still really nice and crisp and sharp, even with really, really small text on there as you move around. on here. So that's really nice. So when you finish using your Helix HD, we can switch it off just with the rocker switch underneath. And then we can store the control pad under the unit where it magnetizes. We can then fold the camera head down, fold the unit down. And then if you, you know you're going to be using it again, you can just leave it in, in situ. But if you want to take it, take it with you somewhere, visiting friends or family, um, or you need space back on the table where you're using it, you just unplug the two connections on the back. And then with it being so lightweight, it's very easy to then store somewhere else out of the way until the next time that you need it. So that's the end of the Helix HD video. I hope you found it interesting. If you'd like more information on the product, please have a look on our website, which is visionaid.com, or you can email us info at visionaid.com. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. There we are. So I'll mention the cost as well on here. Um, all I can really do is say the UK cost and sort of a, a rough conversion into euros. Um, it obviously depends which country you may be in and, and looking to purchase from. Uh, whether we have distributors in those countries or, or not. Um, so the Helix HD price is £995, and that converts in euros to around about, well, it's just under 1200 so 1170 1170 euros or so. Um, in comparison to other systems like this, it's, it's kind of around half the cost of similar camera-only systems that are HD that can connect into any monitor. Um, so hopefully that can make it more accessible for, for users if, if budget is a, is a key concern. Uh, but the quality is still excellent on the device. We will go straight into the Handy Reader HD uh, video, which is our three and a half inch portable handheld magnifier. I've got one, one here. So really nice and light and fits in your pocket. Um, but this video is very in-depth as well and takes you through everything on the device um, too. So I'll start that one. Hello, hello. I'm Ellis Ellis from Vision A International. And yes, I am one of the few people lucky enough to be able to write my full name on a 10-digit calculator. And today, we're going to be looking at the Handy Reader HD 3.5-inch handheld video magnifier. So what do we get in the box? Let's open it up. It's got a flap on the front, and then it just hinges open that way. First thing is a quick reference guide. So this is large print. It gives you a, an overview of the product, where all the buttons are, and what the controls do. So really simple A4 double-sided reference guide. 
Then you get a large print user manual, which obviously goes through everything in, in detail on the product as well. And take the top off, and then underneath there, we've got the main handy reader HD itself. A screen cleaning cloth. USB charging cable. And that will then plug into the included USB charger. Um, obviously, it will come with a plug for whichever country it's, it's going to. Then we get a TV connectivity cable. So one end plugs into the handy reader, and then you have the yellow section that goes into the TV. We'll go into that a little bit later on. And a lanyard. So obviously to protect your, the unit if it slips out of your hand. And, there. and then the final thing is a nice padded carry pouch to, to give it a bit of protection. So that's everything you get with it in there. So depending on which country um, you purchase the Handy Reader HD in, you may have to install the battery yourself. So on the main unit, if you flip it over, there's a nice grippy bit at the back, which then just slides open. And then you've got a standard Nokia mobile phone style battery in here. And then in behind that is the unit serial number and version number. So it just slots in on there and like that. And you put the cover back on like that. And then the other thing to then do before you start actually using the unit is to peel off the screen protection cover. Again, in some countries, this may be removed for you on there. So take that one off. And there's also a very important one on the camera. So if you don't have that one on there, the image won't be anywhere near as clear as it otherwise would be. So you peel that one off as well and then you're ready to start using the unit. So let's have a look at the controls on the Handy Reader HD. There are five buttons in total, so not too many um, to have to learn. On the front edge of the unit, on the right-hand side, we've got the, the tactile and raised buttons. So the bottom right corner is the mode button, which goes through the different color modes. And then above that, on the, towards the top of the unit on the right-hand side, you've got a plus and a minus button for zooming in and zooming out. Then on the top edge of the unit, we have the freeze frame button, which will also enable you to turn the line markers on. And then on the left hand edge, uh, we have the on off button. So if we switch it on now, just push and hold for one second. And then if we get something more interesting, the table surface to look at, we get a, a newspaper page. Newspapers tend to have the worst sort of quality print of, uh, of things you may want to look at in comparison to magazines or anything else. So it's nice to look at them uh, to see what the quality would be like on those. Um, and straight away you can see it's much larger text um, than you get on the newspaper page. And just to give an idea of the zoom range, so it goes from two times it there, which we started at, all the way up to 32 times. Now at 32 times it's not really usable on a handheld magnifier. We wouldn't advocate it um, if somebody needs that kind of magnification. It's not really the right sort of product for that. But if you do need uh, to examine something in really fine detail, you might have something in really, really small print, then that's when it could be handy. But you certainly wouldn't want to sit down and read an entire newspaper. Well, it wouldn't be possible at that size because you don't even get a whole character on the screen at once. But the nice thing with it being continuous, continuous zoom is you can get it to exactly the size that you need it for your particular eye condition and the size of the text that you're looking at. We'll now have a quick comparison of the Handy Reader HD to a really good quality optical magnifier. Um, people will be really familiar with um, optical magnifiers. That's what most visually impaired users will go to when their eyesight starts to deteriorate. And they are fantastic tools and very, very cost effective. Um, but we just wanted to highlight some of the reasons why a user might prefer an electronic magnifier over an optical one. So the first thing, obviously optical magnifiers, good ones like this one, have built-in LED lighting. So that will then enhance the text that's underneath it. And this is a five times magnifier on here. We've actually got the Handy Reader HD here set to five times magnification behind it. Um, and you can see the text is actually much, much larger. So five times on here is never actually really five times bigger um, in real life um, versus the original text on there. If I hold up some text to it as well, so we've got a bank statement page here again. We can see, if I move this closer to the camera, which is how people would use it when they're using it with their eyes, you can also see that you get distortion around the edges of the magnifier, just purely due to the optics and the way that magnifying glasses work. So the center is perfectly clear and, and nice and straight, but anything around the edges is tricky. Um, that's not a good thing for people with macular degeneration where their central vision has deteriorated and it's only the peripheral vision that, that they have left. Um, but that unfortunately is just how magnifiers work. And the higher the power you go, the 
more that effect happens, the stronger the lens is. The lens also gets smaller and then it bends the text more. So it's, it's not really what people ideally want to happen, but it's just unfortunately is, is what happens. So there's the original size and then the magnified, it's at, at five times, but it's only really sort of between two and three actual. So if we compare that then to the handy reader, so the size of text on here, the nice thing about the handy reader on here as well is it's a 60 frames per second camera. So there is very little ghosting or blurring as you move the uh, unit across the screen, uh, across the document that you want to read. Um, so it stays really clear, uh, allowing you to read nice and quickly and comfortably. So there's also none of that distortion. So the text stays perfectly straight all the way across the screen. And if you want to adjust the magnification, instead of having to potentially buy a different magnifying glass at a different power, we just use the plus and the minus buttons so we can go all the way from two times here, all the way up to the 32 times on there really easily. So it's like having 10 different optical magnifiers in, in one product for that. One of the other key advantages of an electronic handheld magnifier is the ability for it to change the colors of the text that you're looking at. So we've got something here, which is just a standard food packet, which has pretty awful dark blue on blue text on there for the nutrition information, as an example. And then it's got lots of different color text modes on here as well, which might not be easy for a visually impaired user to be able to actually see comfortably. Um, if you've got an optical magnifier, going back again, it will just magnify obviously what's, what's there. So to move it there to get it closer, put the light on. Obviously it does help a huge amount having that bit of extra magnification um, and the lights will, will improve things, but there's white on blue there, sort of greeny black on green, and then the blue on blue color combination there. So with an electronic unit, you've obviously got full color mode to magnify exactly as it is on there. But then if we use the mode button, we can go in, for example, on the text on here, and then we can set that to exactly the color mode that the user may prefer. For 99% of users, that will either be black on white text, white on black text, yellow on black, or black on yellow. But the Handy Reader HD does have a whole range of additional colors you can enable, and I'll go through that a little bit later on. But the quality stays exactly the same, it just puts it into the color mode that you like. Uh, one of the really nice things on the Handy Reader HD is it actually has an adaptive color mode filter. So if we come down to this blue text on here, we can see that some of the text is coming out perfectly. That's the um, text with a lighter color background. But the one with the dark blue background is actually struggling with. You can sort of see some of it. And, but as you zoom in, it will then adjust its settings automatically. So there's nothing the user has to do to then be able to read that information across there. So it's a really nice feature. So you could just put it back into full color and you'll have it there, but you can see there's not a huge difference then between the text color and the background, which is why it's difficult. But by doing nothing other than just zooming in a bit more, it then enables you to, to filter that out automatically, which is really nice. Now it's not just flat objects that you can use to magnify um, with these as well. We've got things like tins of food, so it doesn't matter what it is, the, you just place the camera over the edge of the unit and then you can roll this around to read and again it's working in the two color mode nicely on here. We can adjust the size. It just takes a bit of getting used to sort of rotating the the tin around as you, as you go. Another thing electronic magnifiers are great for are magnifying screens. So if you've got a, a mobile phone or a tablet, uh, obviously you can use the inbuilt accessibility functions on those as well. But if you do have one that doesn't have that or you need to just access something that's normal size, you can just lift it up, pop it on top. You can then obviously adjust the size to this, whatever you like. And then you can just read across as you would if, as if it was an original document or piece of paper. Um, the lighting on the Handy Reader HD, which I'll go into in a bit more detail a bit later on, doesn't cause any problems with screens. So even at the minimum size, you get no reflection back from the integrated LED. So that's really nice from that. Put it onto full color as well, just to see the pictures on here. So it's a nice vibrant color image from there as well. And you can just bring that up to examine pictures and things with it too. You can also use the Handy Reader HD to read books with as well. And that's where its off-center camera design can actually help quite considerably. So underneath the unit, the camera is off to the right-hand side. And it does take a little bit of getting used to because when you place it down 
on top of something to read it, you actually have to place it down underneath the target site to the right, not in the middle of the screen, which is what if you're using an optical magnifier, you'd probably be used to doing. So with this, you just place it to the right there, but then that advantage is when you're going to the spine of a book, you can get in there and this unit isn't then fouling the, the other edge of the book. You can still get into that spine. Um, the other nice thing then is when you go onto the other page, obviously you could do it that way around, but then getting into the spine here, you're going over this bit, but you simply flip the unit around 180 degrees and it flips the image around and the camera, and then you can just use it the other way up to do exactly the same thing on there. So it's really nice features on that. So I'll just pop the unit the right way around again. Then what we can do is show reading lines, because one of the tricky things to get used to when you initially start using a handheld magnifier is actually tracking accurately across the line that you're wanting to read and not go diagonally across a line, uh, especially if there's words that are the same on two lines or it sort of still makes sense, you might miss the fact that you've skipped a line. So on the top edge of the unit with the focus, uh, sorry, the freeze frame button, we push and hold on that and then we will get a line marker. And if you use the up plus and minus, you can raise and lower the position of that line to wherever you may prefer on the screen. And then if you just wait for a few seconds, it will stop flashing and stay on permanently. Go, and then that you can use to help you stay accurately tracked on the line that you're reading across. It's also then handy when you skip back to the beginning of the next line, because you can go to the, the line that you're on and then come down one and then read across. So many users don't find that they need these once they get used to using a handheld, but certainly for initially, for, for learning how to use one and, and that movement, which can take a few days to get the hang of, it's a really useful feature. And then you can also make it go vertically. So if you're having to track across columns of figures on a bank statement uh, or an important document like that, then that's where it, the vertical line can be really useful. Um, and if I just push, it, push and hold it again, it disappears. So just push and hold the freeze frame button up there and it will organize the line markers. What we can also do with a Handy Reader HD is actually use it to write underneath. Now we wouldn't necessarily advocate writing uh, an entire novel or sort of pages and pages, but for doing things like crosswords or signing things or just short notes, it can be quite handy to help you magnify your handwriting. So we've got a standard crossword under here. Uh, I'm left-handed, so I need to flip the unit around the other way so the camera's on the left, like that. And then I'm not gonna to attempt to solve the clues on this. It's the Times crossword, which is quite a tricky one. Um, <laughs> So I'm just going to magnify it up and you can see then we've got my pen nib under there. So then as we, as we start to write, it'll just come out straight away on the screen on there. So it does take a little bit of practice. But it enables you to write accurately in the boxes on there. You can do it in the two color mode if you prefer. But then obviously if you've got something that's really faint, like a uh, pencil written uh, information, it might not come out quite so clearly, but a black biro or a, a, a marker pen will come out perfectly on there. So it's a, just a nice feature and a little thing to be able to do with it as well to help. Another nice feature on the Hand Reader HD is the freeze frame capability. So if you've got something like a phone number that you want to take to the phone to be able to dial in, you can simply position the, the unit over the top of it. And then with the freeze frame button on the top right hand edge, we just click it down and when you release, it snaps a picture, which you can then hold up to your eyes much more closely to see more easily. And we can still change the color modes even after we've taken the picture um, to maybe in full color, or you may already just be in two color when you take the picture, but you can cycle through them if you need to. The other use, really good use for the freeze frame could be when you're um, in a supermarket, for example, and wanting to uh, reach up to something on a shelf um, to see a price of something. So with an optical magnifier, you have to hold it up and get your eyes in level with the magnifying glass. Whereas with this, you can lower it down, snap a picture, and then the, the image will be frozen and then bring it back in front of you. So that's a really nice feature for that as well with the freeze frame. All handheld magnifiers have that, um, but it's just a nice thing to be able to do with them versus um, more traditional sort of optical magnifier solutions. Now we're gonna have a quick look at the menu on the Hand Reader HD. This has some useful settings in there that you may want to adjust. So to get into there, you can just push and hold the M button for two seconds. And the first one that comes up is screen brightness. So the default setting is five. And for most users, they'll, they'll want to leave it on that to get as much contrast as they can on the image they're looking at. And the menu disappears after about 10 seconds if you don't press a button, so it'll take you back out automatically. So I'll just go back in again. But we can use the plus and the minus buttons to adjust that. So we can dim the brightness down um, if we need to. 
and that has the added advantage as well of increasing the battery life. And the battery life is up to four hours depending on the brightness setting and the colour modes that you're using. But I'll set it back up to full brightness for now on here. Um, and then if I tap mode again, that will then go through, the, through to the next option, which is LED brightness. Again, this has five levels, so it adjusts the brightness of the LEDs in the unit, but three is effectively the correct setting for it. So I don't think there's any use case where you'd want to change that. Push the mode button again, and we can go through to sound. So you can actually have a handy reader describe the, the buttons that you're pushing, including zoom and color modes on there to you. Again, most users would just want that left off. So the default is zero, so no sound. Uh, and that's what most users would leave it on. Next one is a calendar. So it does actually have a clock function built into this with time and date. So you can set the, the date and the time on here. And then a, probably the one that might be most important for, for users if they do need different color modes is this option next here, which allows you to change the color modes um, that are on the device. There are actually 26 different color combinations on here. As I said before, most users prefer the default ones, black and yellow, yellow and black, but there are certain times there are colors that a user may need. I'm just sort of scrolling through them here. Yellow and blue and blue and yellow is, can be quite a popular one. So if you do find one that you need or you want, um, you just find it, click the freeze frame button, that will now turn that on. If I come out of the menu, it will then default to that one straight away, which is quite nice. And then as I cycle through the color modes, that one will be added to the list of colors that it cycles through. So what many users might want to actually do, so they only prefer white and black and black and white, you just did turn off all the other color modes. And then when you cycle through, you don't have to cycle through a long list of, of different color modes on there. So that works really nicely. Okay, we'll back into the menu and it goes back to where we were before. So then I'll just cycle to the next one. I've got a nice clear battery percentage on there so it's showing 70% on there we can't do anything with that it just it's just for information only and the next one then is the firmware version of the magnifier as well push it again and it takes you back to brightness so it just cycles through all of those but nice and simple and you just once you're on the mode you need you can change it with the plus and the minus for for number units and for the color modes it's the freeze frame button to turn on and off a particular color mode that you happen to be on but now we're going to have a quick look at the television out connection on the handy reader. This can be a nice feature um, in that you can just take the, the included cable that comes with it, plug it in on here, and then with the yellow phono connection, which transmits the video signal, you can plug that into any round phono socket that you may have on your television set. Um, it is the older standard, obviously, not an HDMI connection, which um, some of the more expensive handheld magnifiers offer, but the fact for on a unit of this sort of price point uh, has TV out at all, I think is quite a nice feature for it. Um, and the quality is exactly the same as you get on here. So basically what that would enable you to do is have a much lower level of magnification or use the minimum magnification on here, uh, and then it will be enlarging it onto your 40 or 50, perhaps 50 inch television screen on, on there. So nice and simple, as soon as you plug it in and, and connect that in there, um, it will turn on. Uh, we would probably strongly recommend an extension cable. This is about a meter long, the one that comes with it. Um, but you'll probably need an extension meter of another couple of meters or sort of uh, six to eight feet extension as well on top of that to, to help plug it in. And then you do have to be wary that you've got a cable connected into the device, um, which can be a bit of a trip hazard. So you obviously make sure that um, that's not going to cause a problem for the person who's, who's going to be using it on there. I'll just unplug it on there. Then the other connection that's on the bottom, very important one, is the charging port. So it's a micro USB one, so it just plugs in on there. Like that and then this end will connect into your power adapter and then there, you have leds on the bottom left corner of the unit which indicate the charging status if there's a red led on that means it's charging and once that goes out it means it's fully charged i'll just unplug that from there another handy thing that comes with the handy reader hd is a lanyard so this just slots in through the little metal support around there and you, you fit it the same way you fit a normal line, you just sort of loop it through. And then when you pop this round on your wrist, you then, with it being attached to the unit, if the unit slips out of your hand while you're using one-handed, perhaps reaching up on a shelf or into a cupboard, then obviously your handy reader HD is not going to fall and, and potentially get damaged when it hits the floor. Um, these aren't rated for being dropped onto hard surfaces at all, so <laughs> you do have to be a little bit careful. It is like a, a mobile phone or a, a tablet type device. 
um, you don't really want to be dropping them if you can help it. So that lanyard is a nice, nice inclusion from there. The Handy Reader HD also comes with a nice padded pouch as well. So to protect it more, you can just slide it in here if you want to then put it away in the bag. It just slots in there and you've got a nice couple of drawstrings on there to do it up on there as well. And then it's nice soft sort of felt so the screen and the things won't get scratched and it'll give it some nice protection. It won't stop it getting crushed, so you do have to bear that in mind, but in terms of scratches and the odd bump and, and knock, it'll really nicely help protect it and keep it in perfect condition from there. And we're now onto the really exciting section of the, the weights and the dimensions of the product. But the nice thing about the Handy HD, it is really nice and lightweight. It's only 150 grams or 5.3 ounces, that's with the battery. So it's not a heavy unit at all. And the dimensions of it does mean that it can fit quite easily into a standard pocket as well. So it's 11 and a half by 7.5 by 2.7 centimeters, which in inches is four and a half by 2.9 by 1.1. So really quite a slim unit and easy to, easy to put in your pocket on there. So that's the Handy Reader HD three and a half inch handheld video magnifier with 60 frames per second camera. If you need any more information, please do get in contact with us. You can have a look on our website, visionaid.com, or please email us info at visionaid.com. Thanks very much. Here we are. Thank you very much for, for watching.